Welcome to the last of our episodes shot in Thailand. It has been an absolutely amazing week. We have seen sights and sounds to rival any area we have sailed. From the limestone cliffs to the beautiful long tail boats, the clear crystal blue water and the ever changing weather, it has been an absolutely phenomenal week. We are so sad to be going, but we know that we're going to be coming back to this area real soon. This has very quickly become one of our favorite ever cruising grounds. So as we take Melinda Jane North, we reflect on what we've done. We look to what we've got planned and as our first charter of a catamaran, we have our thoughts at the end of the episode on what we actually thought of sailing such a different craft to Ruby Rose. It's been a real eye-opener, but our biggest challenge is yet to come. We are used to sailing a monohull in inclement weather. With the weather coming in this week, we are really going to have to find out if a boat like this is up to the challenge of taking on a savage squall. So here we are, it's our last morning in Thailand. It has been fantastic. I am gonna be super sad to get off off the boat. Uh, Thailand, if you haven't been, it for us it fulfills all the iconography that you expect from Asia. There's few places in the world that actually live up to what my image, my mental image before I arrived was. New York City is one of them, uh, and Thailand and Asia it, it also. Like the scenery, the weather, the food, the people, the kind of, it, it's amazing. So yeah, super sad to be getting off the boat as well. We haven't been, we haven't lived at anchor for this long since we left um, the Caribbean. And it makes me realize how much I miss being at anchor. Um, the stability of this catamaran, I must admit, the kind of no boats go past and coffee cups stay where they are is, you can be told what it's like and how convenient it is, but literally we have sailed around for a week. We've been knocked you know, had boats scream past at 20 knots and we still, we've lost nothing from a countertop. Onward and back to base. And just looking, just looking at the weather, to see, looking at the radar picture, to see what, how we're doing with the rain today and what direction it's moving in. It's really bloody heavy. Woo. Can't see what way it's going. But I think it's passing to the south of us. Hopefully it does. If it doesn't, we are going to get absolutely pains today. When it goes like red, like red here, yeah. that's, a, that's a crazy amount of wind and rain. Like okay. a crazy amount. We knew from the forecast and from the weather radar that we had heavy weather coming in. And with the ever building wind, we could feel the boat being buffeted. The sea was being flattened by the raindrops. So we quickly dropped the sails. This after all wasn't our boat and we weren't sure exactly when we needed to reef. The engines were on and we pointed the boat towards home. But all we saw was an ever increasing wind strength. 20 knots, 25 knots, 30 knots and then 35 knots. This was turning into a real doozy. The plotter had us about 25 nautical miles from home, but without a radar and with rapidly diminishing visibility, we put the engine into tick over and just both of us sat watching. We could see hardly anything from anywhere, the visibility down to at some points 30 to 40 feet. Nothing scary, we were pretty happy with the boat, but yet we had a small problem in that the whole Thai fishing cleat was zigzagging in front of us. I don't have any, well, I don't have any gauges, I can't tell what the wind strength is. We don't have any sails up and seas being flattened off. Just can you just keep your eye forward to make sure there's no flat spots? So as the squall continued and the humidity rose, we found that we just couldn't see out of the windows anymore. We knew that the fishing boats were in front of us and to the sides of us. And with the ever deteriorating conditions, we only really had one choice, or rather, I only really had one choice. And as everybody knows, 
everybody wants to be skipper until there is skipper shit to do. And so rather than keeping watch on the cosy interior of the boat, I chose to keep watch on deck. You know how we hate exposed helm positions? This is why. The visibility really was dropping. However, the wind was starting to abate. After two hours of this, this was starting to actually calm down. At no point were we ever scared and at no point did this boat feel unsafe. However, it is a little bit daunting when it's not your own boat. This squall is just not letting up. It's like never ending. Been going on for probably a solid half an hour now and it has not let up one little bit. It's crazy. Luckily the relatively protected Andaman Sea meant that there wasn't enough fetch for really the waves to build up so we never had to worry about waves. And with time the fishing fleet started moving again. Once they'd started their engines we knew that this was about to pass. The Thais and the locals have so much knowledge about these weather systems that come rushing through. And within an hour or two, the sea state was starting to calm, the rain was getting less, and we could hear the crackle of the VHF as Nanji tried to get in touch with us. This had passed through, we were pretty wet, but another learning experience, and as we moved towards a catamaran, a really valuable one. Well, this is fun. Go sailing, they said. It will be fun, they said. Actually, do you know what? It's the first time I've been cold since I got off the bloody plane from London. Um, so, yeah, it's quite a nice, quite a nice change of uh, temperature. Anyway, it's, um, yeah, just a, a very, very prolonged squall. Um, the weather radar kind of showed that Showed this coming? Yeah, the weather radar showed this coming. Um, I think the whole Thai fishing fleet has just... You can maybe see in the distance there's outlines of some long tail boats that they just, you know, there's no point in doing anything, you just bob around until it's passed. And then the bigger fishing ships um, over there have... Um, they just, they just, they just cat on. They put the kettle on, let it all blow through. Because these, these these showers normally last an hour or two. Um, we've got we're dual watching on seven two, so we can talk to uh, Nanji and um, sixteen. But um, what the comfort charter company told us is that no one uses sixteen. No one listens on sixteen. They just said, look, if there's a problem, um, use use your mobile phone. So here we are. Um, yeah, not a lot I can say. Um, not unpleasant. The wind is down to 11 knots. It was up to just shy of 40 about half an hour ago. So, um, yeah, the sea state, because we're in a protected sea, you know, there's no real fetch. So it's literally just, you know, getting my morning shower early. How is it out there? Wet. Wetter than an otter's pocket. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cold and wet, and it's the first time I've been cold since we got off the plane from London, so it's quite nice. But I just want to keep an eye on all the fish and fleet are just pulled through, uh, not moving. Okay. So, yes. <laughs> With our anchorage now only a few miles away, we headed for a secure place to tie up for the night. We were all pretty exhausted. A couple of beers, a meal, and a chat with Nanji, and that was our day. We had an even bigger day tomorrow as we did the last leg back to the marina. Did a little motor past uh, Nanji to see if Yosh and Benita were up yet to say goodbye. We did say goodbye last night just in case, but um, yeah, they're still asleep. It's not even seven o'clock yet, and we had a bit of a late night last night, so that's understandable. We 
We had a really amazing time meeting Benita and Josh. They are very much on our level. They're really, uh, you know, we have a lot in common. Uh, aside from the fact that we both make uh, YouTube videos, but the engine revs up a bit, the thing's whining. Is that all right? Keep going. Keep going a bit. Yeah, it was great fun hanging out with them for a couple of days and uh, yeah having some really good chats and a lot of laughs quite a few beers and uh, yeah we just uh, it, it, you know what I've been a fan of selling Nanji their YouTube channel for a long time I've been watching them for years and uh, I've always really liked what they do so for us to to meet them was like the stars aligned and it was it was really cool so if you don't follow Sally Nanji already I suggest that you do I'll put a link in the description below and go and check them out they're a really cool young Australian couple they're from Adelaide just like me and uh, they're doing some awesome things on their boat they're like hardcore sailors so if we don't sail enough for you then give them a follow because you'll definitely get plenty of sailing action if you watch their videos they've been sailing around Indonesia around uh, Malaysia and Thailand and they um, are going to cross the Indian Ocean next year so they're going to be doing lots of ocean crossings lots of long passages sailing to some cool islands and uh, I think they hope to make their way the following year across the Atlantic into the Caribbean so yeah, give him a follow. This part of Thailand it has been such a fantastic week um, the scenery I have to say is just unlike anything that I've seen before uh, particularly while we're sailing just beautiful really beautiful you know the beaches are gorgeous the islands are lush and green and mountainous you've got all these like crazy like tiny little islands just jutting out out of the sea it just makes for such spectacular scenery on top of that we love the Thai culture we love Thai food we love the Thai people you know we love Thailand in general any part of Thailand we're happy with so being able to sail around Thailand is uh, a particular treat to us um, the weather has been amazing we've had a bit of everything this week from bright sunshine, blue skies and light winds to an actual sailing breeze. We managed to go sailing, which was fun. We were warned that that may not actually happen. We had a crazy squall, uh, which was really something. Apparently there was a water spout in amongst all that as well, which we didn't see. And I'm actually kind of glad we didn't see because Yoshi said that it was pretty like, it was a bit scary actually. If he was scared, then uh, I would have been pretty uneasy and you know our, our overwhelming impression from this week really is just that we can't wait to come back and sail this area ideally in our own boat and when and how that's going to happen I don't know because Southeast Asia is very you know is relatively far away from any other cruising ground that we will probably start off in. We might start in Europe, we might start in America, but if we do buy a boat and we're able to come to Southeast Asia in that boat at any time in the future, um, we'll put it this way, that's now firmly on our wish list. That is going to happen for sure. Uh, there's no ifs or buts about it. We're 
coming to Southeast Asia as sure as we're sailing the Pacific, we're going to sail Southeast Asia. That is a must. Have you got these? Yeah, he's got the crappy ones. But I don't know how long that's going to take us to get back here on our own boat. And uh, maybe in the meantime, we'll be able to come back and do another charter, another week charter. I, like, there's so much that we didn't get to see. And uh, I think that if we come back and we've got another week here or even another two weeks, you know, we'll be able to explore so much more. So hopefully that will be able to happen. Uh, maybe this time next year we'll be able to, um, to find another couple of weeks and, and come out. And uh, if not, then we'll be looking forward to coming out in our own boat one day. Huge thanks to Island Spirit for uh, providing a fantastic catamaran for us to spend a week on. Uh, we really appreciate it and big thanks to Elite Charters who were the charter company that you know facilitated this week as well. So uh, yeah, we, we have to say that that's been really fantastic of them and uh, the customer service that we've gotten from Elite, Elite Charters has been brilliant. Uh, we had a couple of teething issues with the boat when we first picked it up. We had to stop and turn around and you know, they came out on their, on their rib and they were, you know, on board for about an hour trying to fix everything and we've been getting all these follow-up texts and, you know, calls to make sure that we're okay and every time we have a question, if we're like, well, you know, what anchorage should we go to or, you know, can we pass through these two islands, like, is, is it safe, is there enough depth, are the boys in the right position, you know, the texts have come back immediately um, with all our questions answered. Uh, Nick said that the skipper's briefing, you know, and he <laughs> has been known to switch off when he's not actually interested in what people are saying. He said that the skipper's briefing was really interesting. Um, Melissa was very engaging, gave him all the information he needed. So yeah, I, I'd highly recommend Elite um, and the Island Spirit Catamaran is uh, perfect for a, a charter in Thailand, which I highly recommend that you do because uh, it's just been absolutely fantastic. So I'll link uh, to those uh, companies down below and you can um, check them out and have a look. And if you are in the market for a charter week, then um, go check them out because they've been really amazing. And as we passed the last of the long tail boats on the way back to the marina, it wasn't long before the nose of Melinda Jane was once again tucking itself between the pontoons and the deckhands were pretty happy to take our lines, tie us back up, we were home. What an incredible week. We just now needed to get our things off the boat, go and sit, have a meal, decompress, and talk about what we thought of all this. Hello. So, how's your week been? Amazing, absolutely amazing. Angry cat aside, it's been fantastic. Um, firstly, this is some of the finest cruising ground for scenery we've ever been to. Sailing is a bit, uh, a bit sketchy, either no wind or too much wind, but scenery, like wow, like it blows the Caribbean out of the water. Um, weather's been uh, amazing for the most part, apart from that mad squall the other day. Um, and the thing about the Caribbean, we've always said, and we've been quite open about this, we found it very difficult to find really high quality cuisine in the Caribbean. Like the locals just don't seem to have any real love for like cuisine. This is Thailand. Like you come ashore, like every everyone can cook you Thai food. I happen to love Thai food, and it's super super cheap. Like so, um, you know, our dinner tonight, the beers are a dollar. Like uh, the, you know, our meal is a, a dollar, two dollars, and it's expensive here. You know, we go to like southern Thailand or we go to like Bangkok, it, the price halves again. So like everything is like, super cheap. You just can't spend your money. I think we worked out that in our week of sailing, we spent 100 bucks. And we ate out half the time. That's 50, that's 50 bucks on the food we bought, because it's cheap, and 50 bucks on eating out. So seven days, 100 bucks. Like, that's my bar bill for like a night in London, on a quiet night. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, pretty bloody enjoyable. So yeah, that amazing, thank you to Elite Charter, thank you to Island Spirit for like letting us use that amazing catamaran. We hope that we can come back at some point and sail these waters some more. So hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, something different. Again, we seem to be kind of like branching out and kind of appearing like Mr. Ben in different countries. And um, yeah, this, this time's Thailand. Who knows where we'll be next time? It could be uh, Vanuatu. Not even sure where that is, but yeah, <laughs> could be there soon. All right, bye-bye. 
and join us next week as we finally start season five on our own boat ruby rose we head back to france through quarantine legally getting ourselves home to our residence it is an absolute joy to be back so if you do not want to miss us starting season five click that subscribe button hit the notification bell so you don't miss an episode and we will see you soon goodbye